Hola, ha sido un largo tiempo de que hacía un stream, pero aquí estoy de regreso y eh, ahora quiero hacer con ustedes un ejercicio de cómo generar y re o reproducir en realidad un árbol filogenético. Now, to make it all as standard as our classes, this is going to be a class in English. So, launch up your Uniprot and your homework, of course, here shown in my word. And this is the, the exercise. We are going to find several genes for proteins that are related to human hemoglobin and we'll try to rebuild this very same phylogenetic tree. So, without further ado, let's do this. First of all, we want to locate the simplest genes. We're going to start, I think, with Drosophila melanogaster. Oh, sorry, not, let's find out if there's a Drosophila melanogaster. This is the simplest query, the Drosophila globin. On Uniprot, what I'm going to do is type, him, sorry, globin and drosophila. In this case, we have several proteins, only one reviewed, which is here, a histone lysine and methyl transferase, which is not the protein we are looking for. It's even homo, sa homo sapiens. What we're looking is something like this, glob1, globin1 isoform A. I think that's pretty good enough. What we have here is that I already resetted my columns. I'm going to, before doing anything, I'll just select this entry and, of course, add it to the basket. And in order for me to have, in order for me to show, you have to have your, how to have your columns in the correct way. I'm going to go here to columns. Click on Restore to Default, which I guess in my case it's already in the default, and then Save. Now, what I'm going to do is proceed to the next search. Now we're going to look for the myoglobin genes. This uh, search can be very creative. In the sense that we could add other annotations other than him and myoglobin. For example, we'll to try, we could try to restrain it to a specific organisms or clades of organisms. But I'm going to just go for him and myoglobin. And I'm going to use the column sorters. Well, first, I'm going to retain only the review. The review. Here we see the change in the keyword, in the keywords. Now I'm going to sort by organism. And then I'm going to look for, let's see what we need. We need chicken or gallus gallus, human, homo sapiens, and a shark. Uh, I guess Gallus, oh, yes, because we have over a hundred results in this menu, we can select these settings so that we are shown that all of them uh, up to 250 out of 162. In that way, we can, sell, we can find Gallus Gallus. I'm going to select it here, making sure it's Gallus Gallus, and then find Homo sapiens. Myoglobin, not cytochrome C. And now I need the sharks. Uh, in the class, we did the exercise with a gummy shark. Uh, I don't remember the scientific name, but we had to switch to Heterodontus portus jacksoni, which is the sport Jackson shark. In this search, I'm just going to select it. And according to this original diagram, we already have this organism, shark, human, and gallus. 
I'm going to scroll all the way to the top and add to basket. By now, we should have four items in our basket. Now comes the biggest one. Here we have chick, human, and shark hemoglobins, all of the different designations by using the Greek letters. So then I'm going to reuse this keyword, adding the and and then hemoglobin. I'm only going to get reviewed sequences. Yet again, I'm going to use the sorting capability of the columns in the proteins name section in order to select only hemoglobins. So alphabetical order. I have to reach H, right? Not heme response regulator or heme oxygenase, but hemoglobin and only for specific organisms. I guess this list is going to be way too big, so I'm going to change my search over here so that we can find first Homo sapiens and then hemoglobin. So, I'm sorry, I just just making sure I can see you and you can see me. Mm -hmm. Because I got too many results, I'm going to change my keyword so that I only see results for human. That's better. I'm going to sort them again. And here we go. Hemoglobin alpha, theta, zeta, beta, delta, epsilon, gamma 1, gamma 2, and mu. Because we sorted this list alphabetically, all of them are clustered together. And now I can go and add them to the basket. This, there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 results. So add to basket, I have I should have 13. Now we need to change our keyword to reflect Gallus. Gallus. Here we go. We have all of these results are Gallus Gallus. It's six genes or six proteins rather. I'm going to add all of them to the basket. So now I should have 19. If I come back over here to the to the phylogenetic tree, I could count that there's one, two, three, four, five, six chicken genes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine humans, which correspond roughly to what we already found. Now I need to change for to the shark, heterodontus por Jacksoni. I hope I spelled that correctly. Yes, and we find alpha and beta. So now the number should be up to 21, and this is the actual complete number of sequences that are presented in the tree there in the example. Mm -hmm. So we are ready to recreate that tree by simply going to the alignment section in the basket. All we have to do, I'm going to make this tiny window big enough so that you can see it. That is technically I'm going to replace the screen of the search window for the screen that contains what's in the basket. 20, you can see, you can count over there, that there's 21 sequences. That is what we need. We select this check uh, checkbox and then aligned. If you manage to get to this point, you have everything you need. And while this runs, we know what to expect. We expect something like the tree that is in the Word document. 
and our trees should be very similar. It's going to have a diff not, not the same colors, not the, the same nomenclature, but it should represent exactly the same information. And here we have, it, have, here we have it, the result and the tree. We can see that in the example in the Word document, Drosophila is in a branch of its own. Uh, here, following this branch and this branch, we see the distribution or the separation of the beta hemoglobins from the alpha hemoglobins. The shark proteins are the most distant in the case of the alpha and beta. Sorry, I should have selected them like this. Alpha and beta from shark are really, really separated from humans. That uh, stands to reason because these uh, shark or sharks in general are way older than humans. Evolutionarily speaking, they are older. Now, we can uh, download the results and this is something really useful. I'm going to try to save this as a text file. And I don't know if it's working or not. Doesn't look like it's working, does it? Oh, here we go. Here is the alignment. We can select this and paste it on a text editor, such as this one. And there we go. We have the sequence alignment. We can save it and we'll have it forever and ever. Uh, I was interesting on, interested in trying to save this, but I don't see an obvious way to do that. Uh, I'm going to hide the alignment and I'm going to hide the result. And let's see. I'm going to try again. Yeah, it's just, just the, the sequence alignment. It's a shame because we could try to save this and display it in another way. Mm -hmm. Well, at any rate, I've just shown you how to reproduce this tree and how to select uh, sequence information in such a way that you can reproduce something that has been published, that it's actually part of a book. And with some luck and practice, you can do it on your own. At any rate, I hope you find useful this video. Have a good day.